um, yeah, welcome to our third and uh, uh, our third uh, event. We we have that, we've just been doing a, a series of three events uh, as couples and money, just uh, community engagement, uh, just uh, sharing uh, knowledge. Uh, just because we think there's so much knowledge that is needed by our community uh, and also because an opportunity also to just talk a bit about couples and money and the program and so uh, very very excited that we get a chance to talk today and we're going to be talking about uh, the five family dynamics that will sabotage your fi fi your financial success this year uh, this, these are five dynamics that actually stand in your way um, and if you don't know them and you don't actually start acting on them then they really could pull you down this year. And so our hope is by hearing them because for, 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 um, a forewarned is forearmed. And if you have the knowledge, then you can actually choose to do something about it. And so that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. 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 Well, hi, everyone. Um, and uh, welcome. And I'm really excited about this topic that we're going to be talking about, uh, which are the five uh, um, family dynamics. And the first one that we're going to be talking about is uh, different risk appetites. So, and as we do that, first of all, let me just say that uh, we had uh, uh, we've, 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 we've had two different talks that have been talking about uh, just investment opportunities for couples this year, uh, in, especially in years of crisis when there's economic challenges across the world. Uh, and and uh, some of those talks are available. Again, we make them free. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to, once you put, once you're on the mailing list, then we'll send you, we always send the links for that. And even the link for this talk, we're going to make sure that we distribute it as well. Uh, so yeah, so the five, uh, so let's just di dive in just because of time. Uh, so five uh, different family dynamics that you need to know about. And again, we we because of our roles, uh, I my role as a pastor, and also just as somebody who works a lot with people, uh, 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 Carol's role, uh, both uh, not just as a pastor, but as a, a therapist as well. As you can imagine, we meet a lot of couples and we meet a lot of people. So these are just, uh, the, this family dynamics really come from the experience we've had uh, over the years. Uh, just working with couples, especially. Yeah. So the first one is uh, different risk appetites. So if you're taking notes, the first uh, dynamic that you need to be aware of this year that could actually really harm you in a year like this is your different risk appetites. So what's a risk appetite? To give a definition, that actually is, uh, it really has to do with your response to investment opportunities, your response to all opportunities. Uh, basically, there are different kinds of people. If you are to use two extreme ends of the spectrum, there are those people who are, they love risk. <laughs> they live risky lives. And so they, lo they love advancement uh, almost at any cost. And they're always hustling, always looking for every opportunity. And many times we would jump in uh, with a lot of enthusiasm and not always with a lot of research. Uh, so they're on that end of the spectrum. And for them, you know, and, and we, have, we, we have many friends who, who would fit here. Uh, we've known many people. And for them, many times investment and gambling, are have, there's a very thin line. And once in a while they'll break, I mean, somebody will hit a jackpot and they'll make a lot of money. But also a lot of times you're going to find that they're going to, they're, they're going to sink the ship several times and cause a lot of pain for their spouse. And the reason I say that is because on the other end, you have the opposite, the people with a low risk appetite. And somehow, I don't know why God has a sense of humor like this. Uh, usually couples, uh, you find that uh, when, when there's a very high risk appetite person in the group, in the couple, uh, the other person tends to be a low risk person, somebody who just does not like risk, uh, does not like being pushed, wants to really think through it, uh, and for them, it's almost like, wow, I mean, they're very scared. And maybe even because of the burning they've seen happening with a high-risk person. Mm -hmm. So so here's the thing. The problem with it is you'll find the get-rich person, uh, the, the high-risk person is going to be jumping into things and often blowing up. And then the, the other person is really averse and so kind of puts the brakes on anything to do with investment and they have indecision it's almost like they postpone decisions uh they want to think about things so the one who's a high risk person feels like they're being anchored down and yeah. they feel like they're being pulled back and then the high risk uh, and and the, the problem though is they end up also becoming a problem in the marriage because what happens is when you're low risk like that then you even miss genuine opportunities when they come yeah. uh, not just the high risk ones but you're going to miss all genuine uh, opportunities we know many couples where there's yeah. a lot of regret uh yeah. in the couple because when they were younger uh this person who was low risk just snuffed out everything and, and now they look at opportunities after opportunities that pass them and maybe it's a bit late now for them to uh, yeah. take advantage of so here's what i'm going to ask and of course i've tried to cut here not everybody's on the extreme high risk 
Not everybody's on the extreme low risk, but generally couples tend to be a bit different on this spectrum. So what I'm going to ask you to do is, uh, if you're able to uh, put uh, uh, on the chat, just help us as we go along. Uh, and maybe what you can do is, depending on who's on the keyboard, you can put hubby uh, and put their low, risk or the, or the high, high risk you can put high risk. in brackets and then put wife wifey <laughs> and then put low i mean depending on who's who so okay let's go to the next one yeah uh, the, oh, uh by the way before just just to mention that um for the for the ones who are high risk yeah they normally tend to go for uh, get rich skill uh get quick get rich quick questionable schemes, investments uh, pyramid schemes yeah. and so for the person who is low risk they look at you know their spouse and they're like my goodness this does not make sense at so, all and the problem is the issues they're understandable yeah because the low risk person actually has a genuine fear yeah because of what they've seen this person do yeah but then the high risk person has a genuine frustration yeah. because of how they feel they're being anchored down yeah and this is why i mean it, it can be a really tricky situation yeah so that is uh, the different risk appetites now the second one are, are the different spending uh, habits and um it's very interesting that with our spending habits they are greatly influenced by our families of origin and so you find that there are people who are spenders there are those ones who are hoarders and there are those ones who are avoiders so so let's begin with the spenders so maybe what might be happening is that someone may come from a poor background mm -hmm. and um, as a family maybe they felt they never grew up quite having enough and so they told themselves they will never suffer again yeah so when the money comes they decide let me spend it so that i don't feel poor you know uh, they it, you know it was those backgrounds where oh my goodness things were just so difficult to come by and so this is the great break i have my money i can now spend it and not feel poor yeah. or perhaps there was always enough is the other end of the spectrum so they never had to think about tomorrow and so for them for somebody who came from a background where you know there was plenty they they think that money just magically appears yeah it's always there and the ironic thing is that in most cases spenders are attracted to hoarders i mean i, I don't know how that happens yeah but it, in in all situations in many situations it's there so hoarders could also come from poor families where the only way they feel safe is seeing money in the bank account i mean you look at it and you have a good feeling <laughs> you have a high you know during the day or maybe they saw uh, their families waste money and they you know the, uh, the family ended up not doing very well and so you know they they they, they hoard they end up hoarding and then of course you have the avoiders this is that these are the people who don't like thinking or talking about money mm -hmm. for some reason it makes them uncomfortable and christians are terrible at this because we can spiritualize the whole money thing and say god is going to provide and you know just avoid uh looking uh, just talking about finances and investments and so on so for others they feel like talk yeah you know talk about money it's unspiritual uh, for some people they might feel it's too much drama you know let things just figure out themselves i love the example that muna and ben were saying that my goodness for them having a conversation about money was too much and so you could decide if in that situation to be an avoider altogether to avoid uh the drama yeah so uh so there's a combination there you have uh spenders getting attracted to hoarders or spenders getting attracted to avoiders hoarders getting avoided uh, attracted to uh, avoiders so i don't know they are just these very interesting combinations of the exact opposite and one of the problem one of the things why it's so difficult to have money conversations is because they are not rational you're you're being driven by fear because of your family background and so because you're not being rational you know your motives are not rational and so that's why you have irrational conversations yeah. your money uh, conversations end up uh, we call them waterworks or uh, fireworks yeah. Yeah. yeah so what we can do is just ask where do you think just as how we had done with the first question where do you think you lie happy you know are you avoider. a boiler order <laughs> wifey or spender order. yeah because of time i'll move on to the next one even as you're writing uh the third dynamic that could really threaten and sabotage your finances this year. Uh, and this one, I think, is, 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 is it, it happens a lot. Again, it's one we come across a lot. It's called the Lone Ranger. And the Lone Ranger happens in uh, two ways. Uh, for some couples, you might find that one or both couples think spouses, they think they, they don't need the other person to succeed. They already have it. They already have figured it out. 
Uh, money was never supposed to be done. I mean, in partnership anyway, I've got my separate account. I've got my separate investments. And you're going to find that there are couples where none even knows what the other earns. It's, it's not even an issue. It's like, you do you, I do me. Uh, and then in some cases, you're going to have to find, you're going to you'll find that one of the spouses is the money expert. So it could be the wife, but typically it's usually the husband. Mm -hmm. So maybe he works in investment or in banking or insurance mm -hmm. or wealth uh, management or one of those uh, money, money things. Uh, he's an actuarial guy. Um, mm -hmm. He's a finance guy. And, and, and because they know so much about money, it's basically like, why, why are you outsource even discussing it? Just outsource to me. I'm the one who knows everything. And the spouse often just feels intimidated or just feels like, okay, just handle it. Especially if they're an avoider, they'll be like, okay, money is looked after out there. I don't know how it happens, but magically it shows up. Yeah. And, and basically that, 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 that's, that's, you know, that's, that's kind of a, a, a major dynamic where you just find a couple where you're like, there's a lone ranger in this couple. Yeah. And usually it's one of them. It could be the wife, uh, it could be the husband, or it could be both. Sometimes it's both hub, hubby and wifey are lone rangers. And they're happy to remain that way. And many times they're happy, happy to remain that because they don't see the negative yeah. or the, the danger of that. Uh, we've also seen cases where one spouse becomes a lone ranger out of frustration that the other spouse is not getting it. Mm -hmm. Or they're just maybe too slow. Uh, they think too long. They're risk averse. Uh, and Or they'll slam the idea when I bring it. So they just find themselves doing their thing. Uh, maybe not even telling the spouse what they're doing. I don't know if anyone's feeling that one. Uh, but again, it's just being able to say, yeah, uh, are we lo have, are we lone rangers? Uh, is there a lone ranger in the house? And sometimes it's an, a mutually agreed loan uh, position. Sometimes it's not, but it just is. So right now we're not even discussing the the positivity or the negativity of it. We're just saying this is this is because first thing you have to do before you can you can actually uh, protect yourself from these uh, dynamics that can sink your family is to admit them, to acknowledge them. Uh, so we'll keep going. Remember, there are five. Uh, so we want to just go into the, the fourth one. Yeah, the fourth one has to do with the past hurts and betrayals. And yeah. some couples interaction with money is determined by the past. You know, they, they, you know, perhaps you trusted your spouse and they made some bad decisions that landed you in trouble. Or maybe it could have been your own home. It's, you historic. Saw your yeah. it's historical. You saw, you know, the, the hurts and betrayals happening in your parents' home, where maybe your mom was left destitute because of your dad's bad decisions or vice versa. And when these issues are not surfaced and discussed, they make money conversations very uncomfortable or even non-existent. And the fear of being betrayed means that it is impossible to work together. Yeah. That fear has to be addressed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically, I mean, and it's, it's you're just all of us by the way our past plays a big role in who we become yeah and so when you saw we're basically responding to the past and you've seen and some of us even it's part of our counseling by aunties and uncles when you're getting married it's like you never trust uh, a man with your money you never try you never show her what you earn mm. uh and it's part of our cultural conditioning and so this one it's it's, it's just we're, we're held by the past and let me just say if you're held by the past this could actually be a family dynamic that could sabotage your ability to work together now because of time i won't ask people to to comment on this on on this one but let me just jump to the last one uh because i want us to, to make a few comments on how to overcome some of these things uh number five uh is lack of common money common, purpose. yeah, Maybe lack you can of, talk about yeah. That one. and uh, amos 3 3 says how can two walk together unless they are agreed and um you know if you don't know where you're going then any road is going to get you there so if as a couple you have not agreed or figured out the bigger purpose, you yeah. know, the reason for your earning, the reason for your investments, then you'll find yourself squabbling over small issues that, that are really not important. So that thing of not having a common money purpose is huge. In, in, uh, as a day, it's, it's one of those things that can actually cause sabotage, uh, that could sabotage you unless you address the issue of why you're earning money together. And it's one of those things that people don't teach you, that there's a reason for money for you as a couple. And when you don't know your reason, then reasons become small things that just draw you apart. But when a couple has a vision, there's a clarity, because the Bible says without vision, people perish. And many couples are perishing because of lack of vision. So, so, so these are the five things. And as we talk about them, you can see they're soft things because many times people think that the things that will sabotage your marriage is you don't know an investment advisor, you don't know anything about stocks, and you need to learn about this. But actually, a, a, a large part of why couples, uh, why money ends up becoming a, 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 a cause of separation and divorce and sore pain in marriage, it's not even the hard issues. It's usually the soft issues. 
And those things can actually really sabotage. As, as, as my wife said, uh, they're not rational. They're things that are within us and they actually can be explained. And because of that, when we have that argument, when we have that, everyone feels that on the right. And in a way they are because your issues are genuine and they're valid. So not knowing how to manage money together, uh, not knowing how to build wealth together, not knowing how to marry your money. Uh, this is something that is very common, even for couples who the society would define as happily married couples, yeah. couples who even are doing ministry, serving in, in ministries. And you're going to find that money is just a place of pain um, or fear or anxiety. Now, there is there are powerful forces that are unleashed when you begin to understand how to work together as a team. Uh, when you become a, a powerful team, because there's a reason God put you together when you're a couple. Uh, it's not like, you know, if, if both of you thought the same, I, I, maybe that's why he, he gets us to marry really opposites. opposites yeah. If both of you thought the same, then one of you would be unnecessary. Mm -hmm. If both of you are fantastic goalkeepers, who will score the goals? So there's a reason why God brought you together. And it's important and critical for you to learn how to succeed together. And there's a great scripture, uh, by the way, that uh, we we consider our favorite scripture for us uh, because it's it's one, it was actually printed on our wedding card. It was our, our theme wedding card. When, uh, when, cards, when cards used to be printed. When cards were printed, you know, those days, for some of you might be wondering you what are what cards. Talking about. Uh, and and, and, and uh, it's basically, that was 27 years 27, ago, yeah. uh, going to 28. And maybe you can just read that verse Yeah, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. And it says two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? The one may be overpowered. Two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. So the interesting thing is when you when you think about um, the scripture, many times you would not think that an ancient book could have wisdom that would actually become life wisdom. It's something that would actually rescue couples in the 21st in, the, in, the, in this 21st century. Uh, but it's amazing how powerful this scripture is when you start to understand it and its dynamics and how it can work to liberate you as a couple. Uh, so that you, this family dynamics are actually overcome. Uh, so we're going to talk about the five benefits of working together financially. And we want to persuade you if you're here that it, you really are missing out when you don't work together financially. Uh, and the first, then the first reason why it's so important for you to work together financially is more profit. I, I've, I've, we, we, as, as we put the chart uh, on the chart, the, the verse that we just read. And it begins by saying two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. Now, return is actually a business term. This was business language that was being used by King Solomon, by the way, who was incidentally the, the richest guy of his time. And he's basically talking about profitability. In other words, he says, when you work together as a team, two are better than one because there's always more profit or there should always be more profit. And that's called the law of synergy. Uh, the law of synergy means the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Uh, and Proverbs 18.22, it's one of my, it's a really great verse. It says, he who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. Um, what is favor? Favor is approval. It's goodwill. It's benevolence beyond what is earned. It's actually divine acceleration. Mm -hmm. And so when you basically find, the Bible is saying, when you come together, when two become one, there is approval. There is favor that God gives. Yeah. yeah, and and I think maybe it would be good if we shared how this has worked for us. Now, personally, I really depend on on my good husband over here for vision and leadership. Uh, for example, in 2020, at the height of COVID, uh, you know, he proposed that we liquidate some of our savings and build a house, and I was so scared. I mean, uh, you can now tell who's the high risk and who's the you know low risk here. I was so scared, and the thing is that as a woman money in the bank represents security i don't know if anyone feels me here and i would not even so for me even that idea would never have come to my to my mind uh, it was too much to be thinking about building a house it was such a risky proposition especially at the at the height of covid yeah yeah and and you see the thing about it is for me i'm just one of those people who i i, I look i look ahead i'm able to see ahead and i was like we don't know when this thing is ever going to end uh, we don't know how sustainable it is to live in a rental house. Uh, there are so many things we didn't know. And then the, the, we were able to do the calculations. And actually, I was able to show her that this house is actually uh, it's an investment. 
because we are not going to live here forever. We're just setting it up and it's, end, it's going to end up being a really nice rental property. And so it's part of our investment plan. So I was able to actually move her back from panic and start to say, hey, this is actually <laughs> helpful for us if we invest now. We'd have made this investment in the future, but COVID was a fantastic time uh, for us to actually do it. And so for me, having done the maths, it, it, it was just interesting that I could actually convince you to take the risk. Mm -hmm. You see, the thing about it is in every couple, there's one who sees big picture and opportunities. Uh, and when you start to learn to work together, because of course I couldn't have done it without you. Um, when you start to learn how to persuade the other and the other person stops seeing threat in that, but is able to bring in, because I think you are able to bring in a lot of caution and yeah. you're able to raise the right questions. And that's how we work together. I find that we work really well together because you're able to temper and slow down and help me see, okay, what about this? Ask the right questions that even help me think better. So by the time I'm presenting to you, I'm presenting it really well. And so I think this is why we talk about more profitability. And I think uh, in our lives, uh, Caro and I have run many businesses, not one. Uh, in fact, we're, we're just uh, right now helping our daughters uh, start our newest venture. Uh, and we both come alive. We love doing it. And the reason is because we both have fantastic, uh, we have strengths that we've come to understand. This is your strength. You handle here. This is my strength. You handle, you handle here. here. And yeah. profitability has been the result of being able to work together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, the second benefit of working together financially is more help. And uh, Vastan says, if either of them falls down, one can help the other out. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them out. And, and the reality is that none of, not, not, none of us, no one of us is perfect. Even the strongest of us fails at points. And, and, and you know, we, as we have been saying, we each bring different strengths and we need to cover each other's weaknesses when we, you know, and that happens as we work together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's interesting uh, when you talk about help, uh, because when I have, I usually tend to have the bigger picture uh, for us as a couple. So I, I usually will have, um, I'm, I'm good at seeing the opportunity. opportunity, basically. Yeah. So I remember, um, and, and I think for me, the, the crazy thing is, we, I tend to see the vision, I get excited about startup, and all our businesses have been like that. Yeah. Uh, we but run a media energy. business where I'm the one who I learned how to edit videos and documentaries. I learned how I brought the staff on. I put a lot of energy and then I got bored. I'm a starter. <laughs> and I don't know how to keep running the thing long term. And then, I mean, I've, how many businesses? Even, even yeah. the one we're starting. But the good thing is yeah. now we know. Because yeah. I know even as I'm starting it, uh, Carol loves the fact that I have the, I have the latent energy. I'm the one who's going to boil the oh, water shit. until it's boiling. Yeah. But after that, I move aside. Yeah. And within the year, she's the one who starts yeah. running the yeah. business. Yeah. And because of knowing that, I mean, our, our video business, I remember was the first business we ran, uh, really ran together as a, a yeah. formal business. Yeah. And it ended up being one of the leading business uh, businesses it's in its field in Nairobi. Yeah. And so and, and so I think that's the beauty of helping each other, understanding that yeah. you help each other, that your strengths are not a coincidence. Yeah. That your opposite strengths. Yeah. yeah. Now, you know, there are so many families where everyone is doing their own thing and, you know, husband and wife are not talking. But when you look at that scenario, you know, you say, who who is it who's really gaining? when a husband and wife are not talking. And it is actually the state. It is the state. So to just give an example, in Kenya alone, I don't know about the East Africa region, um, but this is just to illustrate, uh, you know, there's the Unclaimed Financial Assets Authority. Mm. And uh, just according to a recent article, they are now sitting on 54.8 billion Kenya shillings or $540 million in idle cash shares and dividends. Yeah. You know, so, so these are people who died. They died. And their wives had no clue. No clue. No <laughs> clue. Yeah. So this is working very well, you know, for this, um, you know, agency. And lawyers. And lawyers. But it's also been shown that when a family, uh, when, when a succession happens and there's a strong mother involved, in the who was involved in the family business and understood it. Mm -hmm. By the way, you just look at any Kenyan family, uh, for those of you who are Kenyans, uh, that has had money that has passed on successfully from generation to generation. Guess what you're going to find? There's a strong matriarch in that equation. Yeah. When the guy died, because you guys always outlive us. That's yeah. just the way God has ordained it. I don't know for some reason. Yeah. Uh, maybe boy child just has enough stress. But <laughs> when, 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 when boy child what? goes to be with the Lord, uh, there's, there's somebody who understands. But let me tell you, it doesn't matter how much money was made. When the guy dies and the wife was unaware and she was not involved, you're going to find the children squabbling. There's nobody who's able to hold them together. And the business rarely goes to the third generation. Yeah, it's it just doesn't. over and over we've seen this happening. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so so the third one is uh, more comfort, and that that is verse eleven. The third benefit, the yeah. third benefit of working together, and and I'm hoping that um, maybe we can even ask people. You know, we'll ask at the end just which one is the one that really is has struck you. So probably after we go all five of them, people can just begin writing and saying which one is it that you're like, oh my goodness, we really must start working more together. But the third one is uh, more comfort. And with more comfort, it says also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Yeah. And that's uh, Ecclesiastes, uh, um, but, uh, sorry, verse 11. Yeah. And uh, four, keeping four warm, 411. Yeah. Keeping warm, this is a language of companionship. And, you know, what's the fun of getting to the top of the pile and finding that you're alone? It's certainly more fun to work together. Mm -hmm. And for now, you know, and, you know, it does not make much sense for each one of you to work separately, growing your own individual wealth. Uh, and the interesting thing is that whereas you will certainly move faster when you work alone, you will also slowly grow apart. And as the years go by, you will have nothing in common except the children. Yeah. 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 Companionship. No companionship. This is, a, this is a, major, a major reason God put you together. Yeah. And I mean, we know couples who go on exotic holidays. I mean, you see them on, on Instagram looking amazing. And yet they're completely miserable. The, the crazy thing about being a therapist, being a pastor, is because you get to know. Yeah. And sometimes you're in awe at just how miserable these people are and yet how amazingly good they look on those holidays. Yeah? The pictures mm -hmm. look so good. Yeah. Uh, you see, for, it doesn't matter if I can afford a holiday to Dubai. If I don't enjoy the person I'm going with, uh, it's it's just not worth it. So yeah. holidays are only fun when you're with people who love you and whose company you enjoy, you know? So you need the warmth of a genuine relationship. Your, your, your finances should actually help you grow together. You owe it to yourselves to grow together. So let me talk about the fourth benefit of working together financially. Uh, just moving us along because of time. And uh, like we said, if you have questions, if you have comments, uh, just put them uh, put them there on the chat and we'd love to just uh, be able to tackle them. Uh, we're trying to finish quickly. So if we have time for questions. So the fourth benefit of working together financially is protection, uh, more security. And verse 12 says, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. You see, in a marriage, you're always going to have two different perspectives. Uh, God allowed you to be different so that you can protect each other. So this is why you have a hoarder and a spender together. You're opposites. <laughs> and the opposites are able to help each other so that you don't go overboard on one direction. You kind of keep each other. When you work together, you're able to keep each other working. And Kara and I are so different. I mean, it can, if we didn't understand, our, and before we understood our, 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 our differences, I mean, we used to get mad at each other. Completely. And, and we didn't understand that these were here to protect us, you know. Uh, for instance, I'm, I'm, I'm more conservative. I mean, as much as you've heard about me being the one who takes risks, I'm more conservative in the way I spend money. <laughs> so I'm a risk taker when it comes to investment. When it comes to, to expenditure, I'm the conservative one. I'm very careful and I save a lot. I'm that guy who will save. <laughs> and it's helped us to grow our wealth. But if we only lived this way, if I was the one who was in charge, I can, be, I can promise you now that I can see it in hindsight would actually be rich and miserable. <laughs> would actually be rich and miserable. There's so much fun that Carol has allowed us to, because she allows us to spend, and I say this in the best possible way. I mean, she's the one who's been able to help us plan those special holidays or plan special meals, takeouts. And it's helped our family bond, even our kids, and enjoy fun memories together. Yeah. So so that's that's part of why that it's protected our family. So we haven't yeah. gone into one extreme. Yeah, yeah. And, and we may be laughing now, but this was definitely not the case. And in our earlier years, these differences really caused us a lot of friction. And uh, for couples, you know, people fight because we tend to be threatened by the differences. Yeah. We don't realize our differences are our strengths. Uh, and so, you know, uh, you know, but I thank God that I think at Couples and Money, that's one of the things that we really emphasize. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, the final benefit of working together financially is more re resilience. Resilience. And, um, and, and it says a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Yeah. And there's an African saying that says, when you want to go fast, you walk alone. But when you want to go far, walk with others. We go further when we walk together. And so I'd like to just say, I just address somebody here. No matter how well you feel you're doing right now, no matter how much you feel you're better off on your own and that your spouse will only drag you, you are better off when you work together. Because yeah. you see, wealth is not the only measure of success. Family cohesion and unity is the ultimate mark of success for our family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We see this story, by the way, all the time. Huh? I mean, um, 
mom is entrepreneur between the two of them dad can't hold a job down let her loan run a business yeah, this is the story of our friend and and uh, yeah i'm just quoting that but i'm just saying i mean we've seen it uh, yeah. and yeah this was a particular story but i've seen mm-hmm. it other places as well and what happens is you end up finding uh the guy is culturally supposed to be the provider mm-hmm. <laughs> but he's the one who doesn't he's, he he doesn't have the skills or the vision to actually man- create wealth now God in his way and in his wisdom gave that to the wife. But then because the problem is in our culture, I'm supposed to be the provider, this he holds back the wife and he doesn't allow her to really grow. And, and so it creates so much, uh, so much tension. Yeah. And in this particular case we're talking about, uh, you find that the, the, there was just a, a, a lot of um, anger between them and the wife many times really disrespected uh her husband her husband yeah but the challenge also is she didn't see that it was him who kept the family together you know yeah. i mean he he may not have been the entrepreneur but god had given him the gift of just humor loving yeah. on the children encouraging them in school caring for them he was actually the one who reconciled people in the in in, in their the home and even in the wider family and so this guy i mean it's so interesting because he's the one who actually held the family and helped the family succeed in the soft skills um and so in a sense it's 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 the wife didn't understand that he was contributing something not what she wanted she wanted the man to provide because that's his cultural thingy <laughs> he wasn't able to do it but he was doing a provision that was very powerful uh, in the meantime maybe she's frustrated he's frustrated because she's she's not doing what you know she's she, he's slowing her down because he's feeling like that's not the wife's role and so she's frustrated as well and both of them are not recognizing uh, each other's powerful contribution so when you start to understand the other person's contribution oh my goodness and that's really what couples and money is about guys uh, we help couples to learn how to work together because that's when they do that they accomplish so much more than when they go alone and the topics we cover uh, for those of you who haven't done it yet uh, those of you who've done it you know this these and you and you can testify how powerful they've been for your marriage uh, we talk about things like different family backgrounds and we also assess different personalities as the soft things, those, those background things, and how they help you approach money differently, and how those differences that have been causing wars or causing just uh, indifference or causing you not to even, or even ignorance, uh, how you can turn those things into strengths. You can leverage them into strengths that will help you become an unstoppable couple. Yeah, we will also help you understand why communicating about money is so hard yeah, or true. so difficult. And you're also trained on how to have regular, practical, and effective money conversations we call that we call that uh, money dates money dates and we call that uh, safe money conversations yeah and this one alone is worth the whole course yeah i mean a lot of couples testify that that was just their turning point yeah Uh, just learning how to have issues without tissues yeah Uh, you're able to actually talk without Without breaking fireworks or waterworks and then uh, also we teach you how to have a joint purpose for your money and and it's not like we tell you what your purpose is you're already it's already hardwired in you and so we help you uncover what that purpose is. And then that begins to help you begin to figure out the important goals you should be working on together at each stage of your marital journey. I mean, you'll understand that if you've got a, if one of you is really a brilliant striker, I always use soccer as a, as in, as a, as a uh, thingy here, a, a metaphor here. And you've got a team, your, your goalkeeper is letting all the goals in. You'll never be a, 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 a world beater. But when you begin to understand, my goodness, this is why God put us together. And here is the purpose we, he put us. And let me just say, younger couples, you will truly appreciate this one uh, on purpose. Uh, but it's definitely relevant to all of us. Yeah. And uh, I think one of the things we've discovered is that debt is a real thing in families. It really is. It's a, and it's yeah. a whole. It's really a whole. And you cannot move forward. We were talking about this here about, you know, just the dynamics that are going to sabotage you. Debt is one of those things. If you don't manage your debt, if you don't know how to clear your debt, uh, then it's it, you're going to be in trouble. And so one of the things we, one of the modules, we talk about how to defeat debt. Uh, we provide a very practical uh, tool that helps you create the margins you need in order to generate true wealth, how to get out of debt and then begin uh, generating Creating margins. Yeah. Yeah. And then also, I mean, and we now get into that because now you can understand we're moving from soft stuff to the hard stuff. We teach you how to become good investors together. Some of you listened to the last couple of weeks. And I remember somebody actually telling me, um, Pastor M, those, those, those talks were really technical. And I said, oh my goodness, I, I didn't realize that they were technical, but a lot of our com- com- couples, because they've been walking the journey, this is a community yeah. of couples walking this journey together. I mean, this was stuff that they are aware about. It's yeah. stuff we've been talking about. So it, it was just helping them. 
And so I said, don't worry, join this community because as we walk together, you are, this, these terms are going to stop looking like technical terms. If I could understand those terms, anybody else can. <laughs> yeah. But it's because of the journey Just that we've walked journey. together. Yeah. And we teach you also how to have to teach your kids about money so that this money that you're creating doesn't cause uh, problems for the next generation, but actually brings blessing. And in addition to that, the class becomes an entrance into our community because we have what we call the couples and money community. Apart from these public events, we also have private events. We bring in experts. Uh, we bring people to bring uh, wealth management. We have, we have resources to help bring wealth management. We have a community where we trade together. And so this is actually, the class is just the beginning. It's not an end uh, into a big life of uh, growing together. So I want to conclude and uh, we want to conclude, uh, by the way, for, uh, for you who are here class, the new, the new class for January starts next Thursday. Uh, so just a week to go. And many of you have already signed up. And already, if you've signed up, you have already received your online account. You're going to get a, a call this uh, during the week by your facilitator because class will be starting next week. If you haven't signed up yet, we still have slots uh, available. We still have some facilitators with some slots. So please sign up. As you can see, it's going to be a great, great investment. So thank you, guys. I hope this has been a blessing. I hope you've seen some of the pitfalls to avoid as we go into this year. But also, you begin, you've begun to see that working together, you can not only overcome these pitfalls, but you can actually turn these pitfalls into an advantage, uh, into an advantage as you work together as a couple. So allow us then, as we conclude, to hand over to the MC uh, for any questions.